Hello, and welcome to Two Pews in a Pod. Join us as we explore faith in a modern world at Evangelical Lutheran Church in Frederick, Maryland. Now, here is your host, Pastor Paul Baglios. Hello, I'm Paul Baglios, and I'm very pleased to welcome all of you to this episode of Two Pews in a Pod. This is our fifth episode in our series on prayer, and we are delighted to be joined for this podcast episode by the wonderful family of the newcomers, um, active members and leaders here at Evangelical Lutheran Church. Uh, They are David and Jen and Ella and Aiden and Owen, Welcome, newcomer family. Thank you for having us. It's a pleasure to be here. (laughs) And we're delighted. (laughs) What we're talking about in this episode is the practice, the discipline of prayer at home, prayer within a household, within a family. Uh, We want to talk about what works and what doesn't. And I had said to the newcomer family that I would start with a few comments that in our own household, uh, for my wife and I, when both of our children, our daughter Gretchen and our son Nathan, were still growing up in our household, um, our efforts at household family prayer were very much hit or miss. There were a number of things that we tried. One of the things that um, proved fruitful for us in a number of years was during the season of Advent, which is also the season in which we are recording this episode. It will not be the season in which anyone hears it or views it. But we found a number of years um, great delight as a family, centering some family prayer time around an Advent calendar where you open a little window or a door for each day in the season of Advent and and see what was there. There were many other times that our efforts at keeping a family prayer practice were not quite so delightful. We would try in the season of Lent to do a particular prayer time together as a family. And my wife and I referred to this as our family Lenten discipline And I learned later how that word discipline was not landing so well on the ears of our children when our daughter began, without any humor intended, to refer to it as our Lenten punishment. Um, So there were things that worked in our household. There were things that didn't. Uh, Bedtime prayers, often uh, we had more traction and, and more discipline with bedtime prayers than other kinds of things. And we know for any family or for any household, this can similarly be hit and miss. And we're thankful to have the newcomers with us to talk about some things in their own experience as a family of faith. Um, What has worked and what hasn't worked in prayer in the newcomer household? Oh, goody. Okay. <laughs> oh, I guess so. I'll start. I don't know that we've ever made like a really truly dedicated effort for family prayer. We have not. Um, we will sit, you know, we not, and recently haven't done a great job, but when the kids were younger, we would say grace at dinner, um, just as sort of a standard thing that we did. We try to do special grace, like over holiday meals, that kind of thing. <laughs> Um, during Advent, we have various books that have got prayers incorporated with stories. Um, but I mean, at least aside from that, not really, nothing dedicated, Mm. um, per se, just it probably more missed than hit. (laughs) Yeah. That book, we bought a, a book probably several years ago now that does something every single day um, for essentially the month of December. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, so we would sit and read, it has like a Bible story. And then um, one of the earlier books we had had a Bible story and then it had like some questions at the end. 
um, that related. The one we have now has like a prayer incorporated with it. Um, and so we'll light the advent candle. And a, a lot of times now we just do it on Sundays, mm-hmm. um, just with life and busyness of schedules. Um, and then, you know, like David said, we do try to do our family uh, prayers and such. So, yeah, I, I think we were better when they were little um, and everybody was home at the same time, doing things at the same time, um, eating at a table. <laughs> yeah. so that's something we've definitely gotten away from more is that rather than having like time together as a family, we've sort of eaten food and then gone to do our separate things, whether it's homework or... If you watch, if you're watching TV or whatever, just trying to relax and recuperate from the day as a general sentiment. But definitely during the holidays, it tends to be more consistent. We did do a Lenten uh, like paper chain um, yeah. when the kids were younger, especially when they went to We Folk. Um, and those would either have you know, a little somebody we would pray for on them or something that we would do as a family, um, whether it was read a book or go for a walk or something like that. Um, so I think that kind of started most of the, the prayer situation, um, in the house. Um, we do that of course, less and less now because they don't really need a paper chain to count Lent, but, (laughs) um, I mean like Owen, Owen will do our prayers for holidays more and more, um, I know sometimes, like, Ella and I will sometimes just sit when we've had rough days together, and even if it's not allowed, we'll just sit and just close the eyes and say whatever we need to say in our head um, just to get us calm into the next day or the next week or whatever it happens to be. And sometimes we'll do it out loud, but a lot of times it's really just us going, okay, Let's just yeah. make it through. Let's and not die today. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not die. That's a good prayer, Ella. Yeah. So, yep. Something that it's, I it's took favorites. from him over there is that uh, my dad. Him over there as, him as, as in your dad. father. I don't really know you too long. But uh, something that when I started taking communion was is that I noticed that my dad typically would sit, take a minute and do a prayer. And I sort of adopted that. I, it, I, it's changed in structure over the years, but as I've gotten older, I've started to start with a thanks of everything that I've been given for that week. And then from there, I'm able to then and here are some things that I want from the week or things that like I feel are out of my control. So maybe you can deal with God can deal with them. And I've just sort of do, been doing that every week. April that I come to service and I feel like that it's a it's a great practice it definitely keeps me calm um and then just trying to sing all the songs at church sort of brings me closer with that it seems like it's each song is a prayer in and of itself mm-hmm. oh that's beautiful and I appreciate that it resonates with my own personal experience experience that I feel most focused on and centered in prayer in the company of the larger congregation gathered for worship. And I think that's a good thing. I think that's why um, God places us in those larger contexts because sometimes it is the larger community that lifts us and sustains us. Yeah, one of the things that I, um, you know, sometimes can't make it to church or sometimes just need... Sometimes a larger congregation is not, I'm not ready for that week yeah. for some reason or another. Um, and uh, so I'll take my Peloton uh, app and there's a, a woman there. She does a Sunday walk and she typically incorporates gospel music and uh, she does several affirmations of the week. And sometimes even just that out, just in the neighborhood by myself, even with a, another person talking in my ear, I can kind of center myself on what she's saying um and that is a kind of another form of prayer for me yeah if i can't be with other people or i'm just not in a headspace to be in church mm-hmm. um that that really helps too and i know he's the nature yeah. buff here too so well and i've had conversations in the past with you david and i know something of how your own spirit finds its way into meaningful spiritual attentions and practices. Yeah, I mean, is it um, 
I, I, I was there's a song by Trace Atkins. I was, um, the the summary is he he's out fishing on a lake, um, and you know, the that his belief and I'll, I'll, it resonates with me is you know I'd rather be out appreciating God's creation rather than sitting in church thinking about being outside. Hmm. I, I want to come back for a moment to something you said, Owen, because I think that's insightful. And again, it resonates with something I experienced in our own family when our daughter and son were still growing up with us. Ours, our household was four. Your household is five, not counting animals. Um, and one of the realities is that it's often difficult for two people and even harder for three or four or five or more to all be on the same wavelength and to say, now we're all going to pause for a time of prayer and this is going to be the prayer. We may all be at different spaces in terms of our attention, our energy. I like the idea, Ella, that sometimes you and your mother would just hold hands and say, let me not die today, um, <laughs> as a way of sort of venting the stresses of life. We experienced, too, when our children were very young, it was easier to keep regular table prayer. Mm -hmm. As they were growing up and becoming ever more involved in different activities, as for so many families, the schedule of you know, getting people where they needed to be often meant that we had no time to sit down, all of us together, even to share dinner, let alone share prayer. Yeah, uh, at, often for us at home at dinner time, we're all just exhausted from yeah. the day. Nobody yeah, really wants nobody to talk has, to each other. Right, nobody <laughs> has energy to do anything other than just sit and eat and <laughs> be done right I like, remember like Aiden appears to be yeah, right now Aiden's you want to say tired. anything in this Aiden you don't have to well I mean Aiden is one of the ones that's that reminded me actually about the advent book this year um because we you know we put the advent uh wreath out and I it's not on our big table where we would typically sit for dinner because that's not where we are all the time yeah so I tried to put it in a more prominent place um but he brought me the book and he was like let's read this let's read this and so it reminded me like oh we need to read this and something i did when um they were really young um that, that santa helps us with is that they would get books at the beginning of uh lent or not lent excuse me advent <laughs> they would get books at the beginning of advent and the books were a mix of traditional stories like rudolph the red-nosed reindeer or how the Grinch Stole Christmas. But also um, like legends and stories about like origin stuff. We haven't been to, we, I don't, we didn't get those this year. So, no, they're out. We got them. Mm -hmm. We just haven't really read them. Yeah, um, so one of the things that we used to do, especially when the kids, especially when Owen and Ella were much younger, but even when Aiden, because the two of them liked to read to Aiden when he was really little, yeah. um, was we would all pile into our bed and read one of the books every yeah. single night. Now we're um, all too big. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of them are, but um, some of the the books in there are, you know, based on Christian stories, you know, things like the, the stockings. The and Christmas cookie. The Christmas cookie one. The Christmas tree one. Candy cane. I love the Christmas tree The Christmas candy tree cane, one. Did you say? The, the, yep, the story the of the candy, candy cane. cane. Aiden likes that one. Um, so now they're kind of just they're under the tree that they can read. Um, but Aiden will sometimes, you know, bring me one and go, can you read this? And it kind of reminds me of when Owen and Ella would come in so excited to rip open one of those books. And this one over here who, you know, yes, half of them, I can't keep it together. Can't keep it together. <laughs> and, you know, and he just, but it's, it's almost like sitting through a prayer of, we're all together. This is the 10 minutes that we have all come together. And even if we can't keep it together, it's everybody's kind of heart is all there together through it. Uh, now yeah. Owen can't keep it together. So, <laughs> Well, okay. and I think that's a really I, important point, Jen, that prayer, I think, can often be 
a quality of activity together mm -hmm. that may not be in an explicit sense saying a prayer or saying prayers, but when you are really focused on being together, when the, when the attention you're giving is to one another and your relationships, there is a prayerful quality to those experiences that I, I would certainly say that is household prayer. Something that I want to go back to is what my dad said about like being outside. Um, that's probably, so I'm not wearing now, but I have a sweatshirt from when I went to Filma, which is a outdoor ranch in New Mexico. Yeah. And, and I, I, it was during my confirmation, but I think that was really where I truly was able to connect with God. I hadn't really had anything like that where I was just there and I could feel his presence. And ever since I've just, I've had a very powerful, like personal connection. I've wanted to go to church. I've wanted to like a prayer. I've actually recently, I, in December, I was, I decided to take out my Bible and start just reading stuff. And I think just, I, I, as I've gotten older and realized that, you know, I'm starting, starting to go on, to my own path rather than just being like just going with the bandwagon with of my family that I start that I need to start developing my own connection and sort of figuring out oh, not just where we as a family stand but where I stand personally so that way when I do come together I can understand where I where my wheel sits on the ground that's well put and I'm gonna I'll publicly acknowledge here in the podcast that you have several times over more than a year approached me and said, Pastor Baglios, I'd like to talk to you about maybe preaching sometime. I, I, w I have. I and have. I keep pushing you off. I have um, a choice. But I'm, I'm going on record <laughs> to say um, I'm not unmindful of that. And you and I, I'd like to sit with your family um, and we'll talk through something and then we're going to consider together an occasion that what is stirring in you will be given expression. So stay tuned. <laughs> Can uh, I tell a so short story? Absolutely. So when Owen was, um, what was he, seven or eight, probably, uh, oh, I can't remember which pastor it was that was here. Pastor Bob. Pastor Bob, there we go. Good job, Bob. Pastor yeah, Bob asked. asked Owen, asked a question of the oh small gosh, children. And, and Owen just started talking. Didn't he like raise his hand one time at church too? And, and, and yes, <laughs> do that. And he he just started like talking. And of course, Dave and I are sitting in the pew, like, oh my god, okay. <laughs> um, and afterwards, everybody came up to us and was just like, oh my god, he did such a good job. Like he answered that so wonderfully and. Um, you know, so, and, and yes, raising his hand in church, Pastor Bob or pa one of our one pastors, of pastors had asked a question, which was supposed to be rhetorical, <laughs> you know, I didn't know that at the time. And so he's got his hand in the air and they were like, okay, what would you like to say? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't think that preaching thing is too far off. Right. I don't think it is either. I don't think it is either. Uh. And uh, jumping off what Owen said, I just wanted to share one of my own experiences, especially in December. Um, I really like on like a cold night to go outside and just like if it's clear, go outside and just like look at the stars. I'm sorry, I'm not going to keep it together, but I really <laughs> feel like God is with me. Um, and it just, it's very peaceful and very calming for me. <laughs> and that's her daddy. <laughs> well, it's a beautiful part of this family. And I know um, this family has together faced some sadness. Um, and I think it is the strength of the love that you bear for one another and the strength of the faith that carries God's love for all of you that just radiates from all five of you and from the newcomers as a whole. Um, you never have to apologize for those tears, Ella. <laughs> I want to come back to what you've mentioned because we had we've always done this too, and it's one of the I think it's a it's a great gift of the church 
we've always had in our home an Advent wreath in the season of Advent. And one of the easiest things to do is to find even just a moment to light a candle, Mm -hmm. one or more, depending on the week of Advent that we're in, and to pause even in the simple cheer of the flame or those flames. The kids get confused because my Advent wreath still has purple and pink because I grew up in the Catholic (laughs) Church. Um, And so they get really confused. I, I never. They're like, which candle are we supposed to be lighting? I'm like, I, at some point we'll replace them all with blue. Yeah, at some point <laughs> when but, we run out of pink and purple. Because we still have. Yeah, pink but those pink colors pink. are fine. Um, and the pink is actually. We were talking about this earlier. The pink is actually <laughs> rose. Right. And as Daniel Catalano likes to say, it's because Jesus didn't pink from the dead. He rose from the dead. That makes sense. And the rose is for the third Sunday of Advent. See, I told you Um, you were lighting the right one. Yep. Good job, Aiden. (laughs) Aiden is our candle Um, lighter. He likes to light our Advent candles. He reminds us, right, Aiden? To light them? Yep. Yep. Well, this has been delightful, and I want to make sure if any of the five of you... um, have something you really wanted to say or comment on that we still have time to do that? No, I think we covered yeah. everything. Like oh. I said, mostly miss rather than hit. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, some, there's something. Yeah, but go ahead. There's something that I wanted to say about when I had a faith thing. Um, back when I was probably Aiden's age or maybe a little older, I had really started to question my faith like right around the time before my communion. Mm-hmm. And I started like thinking like, oh, it's just indoctrination. Like everyone's off their mind or whatever. And then I don't know what changed, but I had one of those moments where it's like, maybe instead of thinking that this is just because this is what everyone does in here doesn't mean that it's wrong. Maybe, maybe it is what it is should be and how it is and everyone should do this or be have some relationship with God no matter what religion they are and that's sort of where I had my turning point I don't remember what it was but something it was something we had our in conversation about faith and well, one day yeah. in the kitchen that we me had and that dad about faith and then with with uh, Grammy and Poppy my dad is a, a deacon in the Catholic Church so we kind of had that perspective side and we had some other friends that were of different religions so we kind of all kind of talked about it as a family during that time too it was it was was just one of those things where something that my dad said to me i don't remember exactly what it was but it really struck me as like god isn't presented himself differently to different cultures at different times because it was what they needed to explain how the things were at the time i'd been really into greek mythology hmm. i think and that's a conversation for another podcast i understand i'm just saying, i'm just saying that was what it was and that was, it was well, a, very I want to you. a very interesting thing that i had that he said to me and i i don't in any way want to cut you off but i'm eager to commend you and i want to encourage you i mean something that some years ago began to occur to me and has continued to be a swelling conviction. I think our faith grows more from the questions it prompts. Mm -hmm. And that every answer, you were using the word a moment ago, Owen, maybe, I think of all of the answers as what if. And the answers ask us to try on meaning and possibility And I think we can experience in our lives that for a season of our lives, some places where we may settle in our understanding are really helpful to us. And then later, we need to crack that open again. Um, And the questions help us and move us. So I would say, if this doesn't sound patronizing, questioning your faith is living your faith. And on that note, this is wonderful. 
We may have to have a whole podcast of the newcomers. Oh, we'll have to oh. think up a new title. Or just um, I, I think but, we just trade off between people. Like we have podcast with dad, podcast with mom. No, uh, maybe good. not Ellen. But I'll do thank you, newcomers, and I want to let each of you say. Um, your own name and goodbye. Go ahead first. I'm Owen. Owen. Have a nice time. Ada, are you going to say goodbye? No? Okay. No. Aiden doesn't <laughs> want to say goodbye. Okay. This is Ella. Goodbye. This is Jennifer. Have a nice night. This is David. Have a good nice night. And this is Paul Baglios. Thank you for joining us. It's waving. This has been Two Pews in a Pod a podcast hosted by the lead pastor of Evangelical Lutheran Church in Frederick, Maryland. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.